organizational accounts will no longer be active on Twitter <laughs> because the platform is taking actions that undermine our credibility <laughs> by falsely implying that we are not editorially independent. <laughs> we are not putting our journalism on platforms that have demonstrated an interest in undermining our credibility and the public's understanding of our editorial independence. <laughs> well. Bye. NPR is pretty clearly a Democrat left-wing outlet. NPR literally stands for National Public Radio. And the TV version, PBS, stands for Public Broadcasting System. When you hear public, that means government. NPR was created by an act of Congress and has always been funded in part with taxpayer money. The current left-wing talking point is that it's only 1%, but in reality, with CPB funding, it's actually more like 12%. Here's my question. Why aren't they giving up that money if it's so insignificant? It literally says government funding is essential on their website. What? Remember what happened when Mitt Romney suggested defunding PBS and NPR of federal funds? They lost their minds. I'm going to stop the subsidy to PBS. I'm going to stop other things. I like PBS. I love Big Bird. I actually like you too. But I'm not going to I'm not going to keep on spending money on things to borrow money from China to pay for it. You can debate whether or not there should be funding of public broadcasting, but when they always sort of tout out Big Bird and say we're going to kill Big Bird or that actually is misleading. I mean, my son was devastated when he heard that Big Bird might be killed. I mean, he really no That's going to solve our budget crisis. Not funding Big Bird. Gotcha. When he was asked what he'd actually do to cut spending and reduce the deficit, he, his big example was to go after public television. So, for all, somebody is finally getting tough on Big Bird. Ari Fleischer, press secretary to President George W. Bush. Big Bird needs to ask Dora the Explorer how she manages to live without taxpayer money. Try it, Big Bird. You'll be just fine. Last night, the late night shows had fun with it, too. Mother fire Big Bird! <laughs> For years, conservatives have accused PBS of having a liberal bias, arguing its federal funds aren't justified. Even YouTube labels NPR a public broadcasting service, which literally means it's government affiliated and funded. Musk even offered to give them a government funded label, which is the same thing. Why isn't NPR leaving YouTube? Oh, right, because YouTube is run by a bunch of Marxists who are down with the struggle. There's no political benefit to leaving YouTube and making a big spectacle of it. Ever since Elon purchased Twitter and the Democrats lost control of it, their state media accomplices have been losing their minds. NPR is quite obviously left-wing and geared towards Democrats, which it should not be if it's public. How would the left and the Democrats react if we had another version of NPR, but it was just like Fox News and their taxpayer money was going towards it? I guarantee you that would end immediately. NPR and PBS both took part in what can only be described as a mass government censorship campaign on behalf of the Democrats and Joe Biden to suppress real, actual, fact-based news that was damaging to Biden and influence the election in his favor. The New York Post was even banned from Twitter and Facebook for reporting this real news. Did NPR and PBS freak out and have a public meltdown? No, you idiot! Over the past few days, President Trump has highlighted a report by the New York Post about Hunter Biden, Joe Biden's son. There are major questions about the origins and the accuracy of that story that the president's personal attorney was peddling Russian disinformation. Unfounded claims about Vice President Biden's son, Hunter. Unverified story about Hunter Biden. Adam Schiff, suggested the claims are Russian disinformation. Disinformation. Intelligence agencies warned the White House that Russian intelligence used Rudy Giuliani as a vessel to undermine the Biden campaign. You know, it's this article of dubious sourcing that's been disproved uh, by lots and lots of reputable news organizations. The story is suspect. Couldn't have two more dubious sources, I think, on any story. They put up this story about this hard drive and it had a really wacky story about how it got to the... Anyway, I'm not going to go into the details of it because I, I, I found it hard to believe. The whole thing blew up and it was used, you know, it took a sort of a, a, a pretty shoddy story and then made it into this cause celebre for the right wing about censorship, which has been one of their 
things they talk about without a whole lot of proof. You actually sound like you're on a Fox News uh, show right now. You sound a little bit like an anchor. Well, from unfortunately, there. Even Fox, Fox is Fox one of the News, only news channels that's covering Fox these news, real emails. Even Fox News would not touch this story that that uh, the President Trump's personal true. lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, tried to dump. You know that. Even the New York Post, the key reporter, did not Fox want to Fox News just confirmed Hunter story. Biden's former business associate who identified by name Joe Biden is the big guy who's profiting off of these shady Let me ask you dealings. This. And it's not just China. It's Ukraine and it's three and a half million dollars from Moscow. All there right. was you wanted collusion. to go there. there you wanted hookers. to go there. There you was a go there. dossier. It was real and it all had to involve the Biden. Okay. Former senior intelligence official tells me that President Trump was warned Giuliani's information was likely Russian disinformation. The Biden campaign says that this is Russian disinformation. They're talking to witnesses, they're bringing people into the grand jury, they're issuing subpoenas, and there is a realistic chance this could result in federal charges. NPR and PBS actively took part in a government campaign to destroy anything and anyone trying to spread this story, specifically because they knew it would sink Biden in the election. That's not journalism. That's what I would expect to see from Russia or China or even North Korea state media which of course they deny being anything like so NPR did cover the suppression story but as Democrat media always does they framed it as Republican seizing Republican seized on the episode as proof of their long-running assertions that the social media networks censor conservative voices there is no statistical evidence to support those claims. What the actual fuck did you just say to me right now? NPR and PBS both have a long history, going back at least 20 years, of being Democrat Party opinion packaged and delivered as soft-spoken, bassy-voiced, hard-hitting, just-the-facts news. But they clearly aren't. Again, YouTube labels PBS as public broadcasting service, which is just another way of saying it's a government-run service. So what's the problem here exactly? All right, folks, that's all I have for that one. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, please hit that like button, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and make sure to leave a comment to vent some of those frustrations. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you all in the next one.